Hi, I'm Stormy O'Mardian, and today I'm talking to you from my book, The Power of a Praying Grandparent. This is episode one, Pray for Your Grandchildren to Know They Are Loved. Your grandchildren are a gift from God to you, and you and your prayers are a gift to them that can touch them for a lifetime even after you and I are no longer around to see the fruit of all of our efforts. God has an important purpose for you to your grandchild or grandchildren, not only in word and deed, but also in prayer. An amazing thing happens in your heart when you see your grandchild for the first time. It's difficult to explain, isn't it? Though it's different from having your own children, the experience is what every grandparent has told you for years that it would be. Nothing else is quite like it. There is that instant and deep connection. There is that unconditional love that is unimaginable before that moment. It is profoundly special uniquely moving. This doesn't minimize the unconditional love we felt for our own children or the moving and life-altering experience we have when they come into our life. But as grandparents, we don't have the major physical and emotional journey of getting our grandchildren here. They are gifts that are laid in our laps, sometimes literally. And that's not to say we aren't constantly prayerful and concerned for the safety and health of our daughter or daughter-in-law, the one who carries her precious cargo to what we pray is perfect development. We also pray for our son or son-in-law to be a good support to his wife, an excellent provider, and a great father for his children, which can seem quite overwhelming to most new fathers. I remember when Michael and I first became parents, the process engulfed us. Whether it was self-doubt about our ability to be good parents, or we feared what could happen to our child, or we felt unprepared, the process was our focus. No matter how many books I read on child rearing or classes I took on what to do after our child was born, the journey consumed me. And that is true for most people, whether the child was theirs biologically or by adoption or through marriage, the road to a child's arrival can seem scary. And when we brought our child home from the hospital, we walked in the house and said, what do we do now? We had no family members near to help us. The thought of raising a child was overwhelming. The sleep factor, or lack thereof, complicated our lives and made everything seem like an exhausting task. If one spouse is not even in the picture for whatever reason, and the parent raising the child is a single mom or dad, the worry factor goes up greatly without having the emotional or physical support of someone to share the duties of being a good parent. The responsibility can seem impossible. But as grandparents, we usually don't fully carry that same burden the way a parent does. Although these things concern us greatly, that is, unless the child becomes our total responsibility and our care for our grandchild is laid entirely on our shoulders for whatever reason, many grandparents experience that. Whatever your situation, 
consider yourself blessed to have a precious grandchild. So many people are grieved because they will never have one, or the one they had is no longer in their lives. Thank God every day that you have the privilege and the power in prayer of affecting your grandchild's life in ways you may not have even imagined. Personally, I didn't have a praying mother or father, at least not to my knowledge, but I did have one praying grandmother. I didn't realize this for years because I only saw her twice in my life, once when I was about six and another time when I was around 12. She was my father's mother and she seemed to be kind, gentle, and a caring person. It was later in my life, after I was married and had two children of my own, that my severely mentally ill mother died of cancer at the age of 64. And we asked my dad to come live with us. He was in his mid-70s at the time, and we gave him an entire wing of our house that allowed him three rooms plus a small parlor to himself all at the front of the house where he could have privacy and yet be with the rest of the family whenever he wanted to be. Every day he sat in the parlor watching for our children to come home from school. They were in grade school and high school during that time and they loved to sit with him and hear him tell stories about his life. He'd had so many near-death experiences, such as being struck by lightning twice, hit by a train, shot with a gun, falling into a ravine on horseback, and losing control of his truck on an icy mountain road and going over the side of the mountain, just to name a few. It was amazing to think that he lived to be 93 and died quietly in his own bed as he slept. Now I asked my father about his mother, and I discovered that she was a faithful, godly woman of prayer. So faithful to God was she that every Sunday morning she walked with her eight children a very long way, even in freezing snow, across fields and down country roads to the church. She did the same thing on Sunday nights and the midweek prayer meeting as well. In answer to my specific prayer, God showed me that it was my father's mother who prayed for her eight children and her many grandchildren. And I am certain it was the reason both my dad and I escaped death so many times. Even though she died when I was only a teenager, I felt it was her prayers that continued to cover me throughout my life. A godly grandmother or grandfather is always welcome in a child's life. But being a godly praying grandma or grandpa is a gift you can deliberately give your grandchildren, even if you don't see them often. And if you don't have a grandchild in your life yet, ask God to show you who needs a spiritual grandma or grandpa. I have found there are so many who do. I've had the joy of being a part of my grandchildren's lives from the time they were born. And even before that, while they were growing in their mother's womb, I prayed countless times every day for them to be healthy and perfectly formed. In fact, I was praying for my grandchildren even before my own children were married, well before I knew I would even have any. And you may become a grandparent because one of your children married someone who already had a child, and that child may already have two sets of grandparents in their life. But you may not know whether the grandparents are praying no matter what the circumstances are, your prayers are still a needed gift for that child. A grandchild can never have too much prayer or too much love. 
Not long after my book, The Power of a Praying Parent came out in 1995 and had sold a few million copies, many people were asking me, when are you going to write The Power of a Praying Grandparent? And I told them that while I was certainly old enough to be a grandmother, my children weren't doing their part. I was still praying about them finding the right person to marry. And I didn't want to write about something I had never personally experienced. I chose to wait until I had the joy of being a grandmother before I wrote this book. Once I had a grandchild, I felt at liberty to write it. And I have recently been blessed with a third precious granddaughter and the joy in the three of them never ceases. And I want to encourage you that even if you don't see your grandchild or grandchildren often, your role in their lives as a praying grandparent is more far-reaching than you may realize. Pray for the parents of each of your grandchildren too. Today they face serious challenges coming at them from all angles and they desperately need your covering in prayer whether they realize it or not. In fact, one of the best ways you can pray for your grandchildren is to ask God to help their parents or step-parents to raise them with love and care. Every child has the same basic needs. Next to being fed, clothed, and provided a home, the greatest need of every child is for love. Not only ask God to help you communicate love to each of your grandchildren in a way they can clearly understand, but also ask God to help their parents or whoever takes care of them to do the same. One of the greatest gifts of love you can give to your grandchildren are your prayers for them. That's because God is love. And as you pray, you are in contact with all that he is. When you pray for another person, you receive God's heart of love for him or her. Among the many rewards of prayer, one of the most amazing is that not only do you grow to love the person you pray for, but as you pray for that person, they seem to sense your love or the love of God through your prayers. When people say, I felt your prayers, that's what they're sensing, even if they don't understand what it is. The reason for that is as you draw close to God in prayer for someone, God's love is deepened in your own heart. So the more time you spend talking to God about a person, the more God's love is poured into you and the more it overflows through you. Even if you live far from your grandchildren and don't see them often, your calls, cards, letters, emails, videos, and thoughtful gifts can have a major impact on their life. That is especially true if you tell them that you are often praying to God for them. Also, ask them to tell you any specific needs they want you to pray about for them. Your prayers can help establish a bond of love between you and your grandchildren, even from a distance. Family relationships can be very delicate, especially where in-laws are concerned. Pray that God will enable you to always walk a line of love, graciousness, kindness, mercy, wisdom, generosity, and forgiveness. Ask God to break down any barrier to love flowing from you to your children, grandchildren, or other family members, including in-laws. We all need a heart that is filled with unconditional love for our children and grandchildren and the ability to communicate it clearly unhindered and unfiltered. 
Ask God to not only help you explain to your grandchildren how much God loves them, but also how he wants them to talk to him in their prayers. Because it is never too soon to teach your child to pray. The sooner we can teach our grandchildren to talk to God, the sooner they will get to know him and understand his love for them. Tell them that God is always with them and how he wants to guide them and help them do what's right. I want to emphasize that just as it is never too early to teach a child to pray, it is never too late to teach a child to pray either. It brings us great peace to know how much God loves us, a peace that is not possible without him. I encourage you to not only pray alone as often as you can, but whenever possible, pray with others as well. There is power in praying together with one or two believers about anything that concerns you. Jesus said, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. That's from Matthew 18, 19 and 20. This powerful promise of God's presence when we pray with others is too great a gift to ignore or too great an opportunity to turn down. Would you pray with me about this? Lord, I lift up my grandchildren to you. Show me how to express my deep, unconditional love for each one of them in a way they can clearly perceive and receive. Reveal to me the many ways I can demonstrate love for each child. I pray also for the parents of my grandchildren that they will be able to express their love for them in ways that can also be clearly perceived so that the children always feel loved. Fill the parents with your love so that obvious signs of love, such as mercy, forgiveness, patience, generosity of heart, acceptance, and encouragement will not only be shown toward their children, but also for one another. Show me if there is someone, another grandparent perhaps, who I can pray with on a regular basis, who would be open to doing just that, your word makes it clear there is great power in praying with others because of the promise of your presence being with us when we do. Bring a person or persons to mind who would want to do that. Speak to their heart about it before I even ask. In Jesus' name I pray. When children see the love of God in their parents, or even witness divorced parents who reveal godly respect and love for one another, it makes it easier for the children to open up to the love of God themselves. A life filled with the love of God and the love of family is the life of peace. And we all want that for our grandchildren in the biggest way. We want our grandchildren to most of all know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, so that they will experience the fullness of knowing the Lord and understanding all that he has for them. Pray they will have hearts to trust that nothing can separate them from his love, not even their own mistakes. Pray that your grandchildren will come to know God and have hearts that are filled with His love so they will live peaceful lives.